You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Wednesday to you, the loyal Locked On Wolverines listener. We are back. We are doing it. And uh, we are going to do some things. My microphone is falling. Slowly but surely. Anyhow, <laughs> um, Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. And we are going to do, as promised, a little bit of a numbers Deep dive with Northwestern. Maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's not. I have no idea. We're going to do it anyway uh, because we never do this. I didn't even, it just made me realize I don't, I didn't do my normally, normally do the by the numbers thing and I didn't do that. That would have made life so much easier. So much easier. And I could have done it while I was doing like my preparation for the show, but I still didn't, still didn't, just forgot about it. And then I'm like halfway through and I'm like, this, I usually do have all this information at my disposal, and I don't have it. For some reason, I don't know why. Well, I have a lot of it. So we'll rely on what I compiled, kind of go through some of the stats that uh, I used to figure some things out. Uh, anyway, so let's get to it. Let's start off the first segment. We're going to do what the uh, what basically by the numbers Overall, then we'll talk a little bit about some of the players that Northwestern has, and then uh, potpourri for <laughs> for the third and final segment. We'll see how that goes. But for now, Zuri is coming to join the show. You cannot see her because she's, you know, camera's only so limited. If you're watching, if you're listening, you certainly can't see her. Otherwise, that'd be weird. Um. <laughs> anyway, let's start with the. Uh, the overall numbers, and I, because I didn't do it as my normal by the numbers thing, where I have a nice table and it, it compares like offense to like Michigan's offense, Northwestern's defense. I'm just gonna give you, and we'll we'll go back and do it a little bit afterwards. But I'm gonna just essentially give you the raw numbers, and then we'll kind of go back. The most important one, as brought up by our loyal listener, whose uh, Twitter handle I do not have in front of me at the moment. Uh, Net points per drive, according to FEI, Brian Fremo, Michigan is fifth in the country with, uh, it's a 2.22 net points per drive. Northwestern, keeping in mind, that's offense versus defense, right? Because it's net points, and they're taking out garbage time, by the way. Net points. So if your defense is giving up a bunch, you're not going to be you're not going to be doing for you know pretty good offensively no matter what your offense is doing if your defense is doing a poor job. But Michigan's fifth in the country. Northwestern is 82nd at -0.29. Negative .29. That's I mean they're not even they're not even I mean I guess it's good that they're not negative 2, right? But I mean it's that's not good for Northwestern. Um I guess I can maybe do some of the comparisons. We'll go back and do that. But the scoring defense, Michigan is eighth in the country, allowing 15.5 points per game. North uh, Western, this is this is with garbage time included, the rest, because these are just the raw stats. Northwestern is 62nd. They allow 23.8 points a game, so middling. So that's something to know. It's good. I mean, it's not bad, but it's you, you can win games if your offense can do something. Problem is, is that Northwestern scoring offense is only allowing 20, or they're only getting 21.8. You're allowing 23.8, but getting 21.8, not good. Not going to work. Um, total defense, Michigan is 21st in the country. Remember I said Michigan going into the season. Now they're going to have their biggest offensive tests next week against uh, Penn State two weeks later and Ohio State then after that. But I said if Michigan can find a way to finagle its way into the upper third of college, or I think quarter of college football, I said like third in the 30s, that's good. So they're hovering, they're they're above that, 21st. So uh, certainly above expectations. Uh, anyway, Michigan's allowing 200, or sorry, 310 point, uh, yards a game. Sorry, 300, that 310 points a game would be bad. 310 yards a game. 
Uh, that's 21st in the country. Northwestern is allowing 101.3 yards more per game, 411.3, 94th in the country. Where they are the worst is on rush defense because they allow 206.17 yards on the ground, which is 118th. They're better against the pass, which is uh, because they're 42nd, so upper third, upper quarter-ish. Upper third, upper third. Um, and... Um, they allow 205.2 yards passing. So with that in mind, considering that Michigan is only passes for 190.7 yards per game, I'm sorry, backwards. Where is my pass offense? My pass offense, Michigan's only trying to pass for 194 yards a game and runs for 246.5 per game. You can bet that Michigan will just kind of go back to the game plans we've seen earlier in the season. Now, that said, I'm sure Northwestern is going to be like, oh, we got to stop the run, and then Michigan can pass. And I mean, certainly we could see some lopsided, what have you. There's all kinds of things that could happen. But nonetheless, that's where they stand. Yards per play, uh, Northwestern on defense uh, allows 5.85 yards per play. So every two plays, teams get first downs. I mean, that's 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 still like that's kind of everything anyway. But you know, because you wouldn't you include the pass because Michigan is uh, 27th at 4.91, uh, so that's what that is. So, anyhow, still, so almost a full yard more per play. Pass defense, uh, we already got to, rush defense, all right. So that's all, all of the defensive side of the ball. Move over to the offense. Uh, Michigan's got the 38th ranked t- total offense, averaging 440.35 yards. Northwestern's offense not good. <laughs> it's a uh, gaining rather 374.7. That's 84th in the country. So bottom quartile. Do I have that right? Essentially, just on the cusp of the bottom quartile in college football. Out of 130 teams, they're they're more in the bottom third at least. Uh, yards per play, they're only averaging 5.2. That's uh, 96 in the country. Michigan's averaging 6.53. Um, scoring offense. Like I already talked, told you, Northwestern scoring 21.8. It's 110th in the country. Michigan is 14th. They score 38.5. So, again, all of this plays very much into Michigan's favor according to just the numbers. I already told you about pass offense. Michigan's ranked 103rd. Northwestern is ranked uh, 95, so there's a nine-yard differential. Michigan's not apt to pass the ball. Northwestern is trying much more to pass the ball, and they're not doing a good job of it. Run offense, Northwestern's actually pretty good at running the ball. I would have thought otherwise, but that's not the case because they have not been a very good rushing team in recent years. It's uh, They're 54th in the country. They average at 171.33 yards on the ground, but most of that comes from one guy. You can, if you can stop that one guy, this will be a good warm up for Michigan state in the sense that I think that Northwestern is going to try to throw the ball more under it with Ryan Holinsky and uh, Michigan certainly is going to need to learn if it can stop the run and what's going to happen if they play action pass off of that and all of that kind of stuff. All right. So anyway, um, I'm going to extrapolate those numbers a little bit more before we get into the players. Maybe the players will, be at the bottom end we'll see here uh, because I have some thoughts that are just kind of rising from these uh, raw stats but anyway first hey college football fanatics have you heard about prize picks prize picks is daily fantasy made easy I love this I know you will too prize picks offers every sport you can think of like NFL college football NBA college basketball MLB soccer MMA and more Price Picks offers more college football props than anyone in the world and offers all of the star players, the Power Five, as well as the mid-major players you might not have ever even heard of. Price Picks offers any prop you can think of from yardage to touchdowns, even interceptions thrown. Make your deposit. Use the promo code Locked On. Receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. Pick two to five players and an over-under on the projections, and you can win up to 10 times on any entry. And it's just you versus the projected numbers. Price Picks allows mixed sport entries. You can take the over on LeBron combined with the under on Mahomes in the same entry. Use the award-winning app on both the Apple App Store or Google Play. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Price Picks is also safe and offers fast withdrawal. So don't hesitate. Check out PricePicks.com or go to the App Store and download the app today. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy.
just totally realized I made the call for podcast questions and it's 7 p.m. And uh, I will not be doing the show, at least not late at night. That's not a good thing. Got to, because uh, unless it's really late, because I am going to the movies. I'm going to see Dune. I am super excited. I read the book. Uh, so I am very excited uh, for that. Uh, I, I actually got chills watching the trailer again. And yes, I am literally putting out the call for questions right here while I'm doing the podcast because... I just literally forgot that tomorrow is Thursday. I'm all messed up. Anyhow. All right. Uh, Certainly do not think about this configuration here. If you're you're watching this, you can see me messing with my microphone. I can't, like, it's literally in my line of sight to the computer, but I need it right here so that I can talk. It's not working out very well. All right. So let's see here. What was I thinking when I was looking up some of these numbers? That's the that's the big thing. Because I had a revelation. I had an epiphany. And I kind of lost it a little bit. But um, we'll see if I can find it. We'll go, we'll go a little bit to the players. Oh, I do know what I wanted to see here. So, obviously, Northwestern has basically made the wholesale switch to Ryan Holinsky, the transfer. Um his numbers are like, he's not as efficient overall. Like when I say efficient, like, I mean, his passer rating is actually higher and, uh, he's throwing for more yards per attempt, but he's missing more. His completion numbers are lower than Johnson. Johnson was a solid 60%, but he had four touchdowns to four interceptions. Ryan Alinsky is yet to throw an interception. He's got three touchdowns. He's got a higher passing passer rating. Um, They've got Andrew Marty as well, who's only played in two games, but he's only thrown 16 passes. He's thrown almost 70%, much higher clip of everything. Kind of makes you wonder why he isn't the guy that's getting more play. But anyway, um, Holinsky, I just want to look a little bit at what he's done because it's it's been four games now. He came in against Duke at the end of the game, I believe, and uh, only I mean, he didn't play very well. He's been a lot better since then. Rutgers didn't complete a lot, 54 uh, percent of his passes, but he threw for 267 yards against Nebraska. He threw 256 yards. So this guy can throw it right. Um, they're, they're certainly, they're certainly finding ways to get the ball downfield. Uh, not good against Ohio in the win, uh, 60%, but he, he wasn't really throwing downfield. It was only 4.4 yards per attempt. He's, uh, 60% of his passes. Okay. That's fine. But uh, 88 yards with that, those numbers. That's not great. But compared to Hunter Johnson, and that is, that is the thing that is very important here. So Hunter Johnson had a, he actually passed all over Michigan state, 70%, 30 for 43, a lot more attempts than Holinsky's taking. Uh, but, uh, it, it, it's still like 283 yards, three touchdowns zero interceptions. It's still like they, they didn't really have a run game in that, in that game. They've kind of found it since then. I feel if I'm right, but after that, not good, right? 66 yards against Indiana state. They won that game. So they didn't need much from him, but still you want to see more than that against a team like Indiana state. It's one thing if it's Washington and you're just pounding it down people's throats. Another, if it's Indiana state at FCS school, Against Duke, he was the starter. He went 6 for 16, 37.5%, 75 yards. So he he lost his job. He did not do well from there. So you can expect to see them pass the ball more. They're certainly doing that. Um, even though the, the highest number comes against Michigan State, that's the where they had the most attempts, in their better games, granted, that I mean, well, Nebraska's got a good defense. Rutgers has now got a middling defense. They still pass for 250, 260 yards. So as much as their run game is kind of going, you can expect that their pass game is going to do the same, right? Because it's been doing pretty good lately. Uh, You look at running the ball, they've mostly been very good, but a lot of that number comes from this game against Ohio where they ran 51 times for 373 yards. Uh, they had a good outing against Indiana State, as you would expect, 209. But outside of that, like against Nebraska, 26 carries for 37 yards. 
you bottle up that run, they're going to throw. But so you're going to have to find ways to limit that. 135 yards on 48 carries against Rutgers. As far as like a decent average carry, Ohio, that 373 yard game was the only one that was above five. Um, against uh, Duke, it was 4.9, and against Indiana State, it was 4.5. Otherwise, it's not been very good. So it will be interesting to see what happens as far as um, as far as the run pass ability, the ratio, all of those kinds of things. As far as teams running against them, uh, again, they've given up a bunch of yards on the ground. It, that's come from Michigan State. I mean, it's three teams. Michigan State with 326, Duke 211, and Nebraska with 427. But but Ohio actually got 106, or sorry, 179. So there's only been two teams that haven't had success. That's Indiana State, makes sense, and Rutgers also makes sense. Uh, so I think that's all. that all bodes well for Michigan. I mean, also, you know, Pat Fitzgerald says Michigan's going to be the best team that he's seen, that they've seen all year. So that is kind of what I'm thinking there. Um, as far as passing defense, just to get a little bit deeper into it, Duke is the only team that's really been like able to go crazy on them. 350 yards through the air, 71%. So it can be done. I mean, Duke is not a good team. Um, and then Nebraska got 230 yards for 71.4%. So um, they've got three interceptions on the year. So you have to watch out for that a little bit. All right, so what we're going to do is we'll talk about the players here in a moment, um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish out with that. Uh, I know, not the most breathtaking show. It's not PFF. Maybe I should have just had PFF on, but nonetheless, it's important stuff. It's the kind of stuff I sit and look at. This is my first chance to actually, uh, before the show and during, actually, now that I was like, what, what am I doing? There's other stuff I can look at. They've had some changes and whatnot. Uh, these are the types of things that I have uh, that that I look at obviously every week. This is part of what I do. Normally, I do it on Sunday when I do my buy the numbers. Just apparently forgot that that was a thing that I could do. Um, nonetheless, all right. I gotta tell you something about Built Bar. Uh, Y'all know how much I love Built Bar. Uh, just as I was like, I need to order some Built Bar. Some came in the mail. I had some blueberry muffins, which are delicious. I got a, there's one like Halloween like pumpkin spice one. I haven't tried that yet. And I put it in my car to have yesterday, and I haven't had it, and I think it's melted. So I'm going to wait for the cool down, try it. Uh, but if you don't know what Bilt Bar is, it's a, it's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. They're absolutely delicious. So delicious that I become a glutton. I have two at a time. They're that good. The good news is, is they are low-calorie, low-carb, but high-protein. I can have two those two at a time, and it's still less than getting a metrics 100, big 100, rather. And, uh, yeah. I put my money more in my mouth is so much. I just, I've bought dozens of boxes over the years here since they've become a sponsor. They've only gotten better. I, I crave them all the time when I delay, when I'm like, oh, I should save my money for a minute. Then I just go nuts and I don't know why I do that. I should always have at least two boxes on hand at a time because they are that good. Um, note that if you're watching, I don't need to read a script when it comes to Bill Bar. I am speaking from the heart. Anyway, so that in mind, Go to built.com, put it in the promo code LOCKED15, get, do like I do, get the 15% off of your next order. That's built.com, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off of your next order of Built Bar. Uh, also got to tell you a little bit of something about Bet Online. Um, I'm slow to the punch. Anyway, football is back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as... It should be in college football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this year. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to betonline.ag to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Don't forget to use the promo code locked on to receive said bonus from football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all of the amazing offers available. For the 2021 season, Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. You know what the funny thing is about this show is I feel like so disorganized when this is the one episode in forever that I've like written down a bunch of things. I back if you were an OG listener to the Lockdown Wolverines podcast. 
I used to write down every sing not like everything I was gonna actually going to say, but everything I was going to talk about, and I would not deviate from the script. You know, because it's it, it's weird. It's new, right? Like I I did like the podcast on the Wolverine twenty four seven podcast. I used to do that with uh you know Steve Lorenz and Zach Shaw. I don't know how many episodes I did, but we did it for we were together doing it for at least a year, probably longer than that. Um, but you know, I didn't have to sit there and think, right? Like I wasn't talking to essentially myself, <laughs> you know, I, I'm on the phone or whatever, and I'm talking to people and it's like, they're asking me questions and there it is. And it's just so much different uh, when you're doing it on your own, right? Because especially now I'm staring into a camera and, and uh, I'm talking to you guys and trying to, uh, it, you know, it just becomes natural. So to actually read off of a screen, it's uh, like, here's the things that I want to point out. It feels weird to me. So tells you about the growth from September 2018 to October 2021. Um, anyhow, all right, so the, some of the players here, uh, there's four guys on offense that I have my eye out for, uh, aside from Ryan Holinsky, who, again, he's playing all right. He's still one of the lower-graded uh, quarterbacks in the conference. So, I mean, he certainly can do some things. He's got four touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, so I know three touchdowns and no interceptions. I think he's got a couple of big targets. The big one is Stephon Robinson. He's, he's got more yards than anyone on Michigan's roster. And it's not even considering Cornelius Johnson's got, I think 282 yards, uh, Stephen Johnson, Stephon John Robinson, rather, uh, 28 receptions for 424 yards as an average of 15.14 yards. Uh, per catch, he's got two touchdowns along with Malik Washington. Now, Malik Washington and Bryce Kurtz are kind of in the same spot, right, in the 200s. 18 catches for Malik Washington. He's got the two touchdowns as well. He's averaging 14.17. Bryce Kurtz is not getting those types of yards. 10.68 yards per catch, 19 receptions for 203 yards. So I say this as like, yeah, those guys aren't as daunting, yet they have more receptions than most of the Michigan guys, right? <laughs> so that should tell you, you know, I mean, Michigan spread it out a bit, you know, more. Obviously, Ronnie Bell started the season and was having a good year, big, long touchdown, and then everything goes, you know. But there, I've, that's really it for the, for Northwestern. Those three guys are the ones you have to pay attention to when it comes to the wide receiver core, um, whereas like Michigan's got Cornelius, they've got Dalen, they've got, you know, we'll see if Roman returns this week. I uh, have a feeling, and this is not any inside info, I just have a feeling next week is probably more appropriate. Yeah, but they've got Sane Ristel, they've got, uh, you know, and then they got all the tight ends, you know, Eric All and, and uh, you know, Schoonmaker. We got to see Joe Honigford get get out there and get his thing. Um, with that in mind, I mean, like they Northwestern tight ends aren't really a threat. Tar Charlie Mangieri's eight receptions, fifty yards, six point two five yards. It, it's he's literally just kind of a dump off guy, right? In duress, dump off. Uh, do note though, Marshall Lang with four catches at tight end. And Trey Pugh with seven, 37 yards, 34 yards. Each has two touchdowns apiece. So down in the red zone, out of out of those nine touchdowns that the team has, those are the guys to really pay attention to, right? Because they're not getting a lot of yards, uh, but they're getting a lot of touchdowns. So those are the guys you got to pay attention to down in the red zone. Those are targets that they like. Uh, obviously, the, the big offensive threat was... Uh, they, I mean, they have got three running backs, but the big one is Evan Hall. He's got 95 carries for 562 yards. Uh, he, that means he's between Blake Corum and Hassan Haskins, but they have one guy doing that. Right. Um, so that, but they've still, I mean, they're still, they're still rushing. Okay. Overall, like yeah, I said, I think they're like 42nd in the country. They've got a thousand twenty eight sack adjusted, uh, rushing yards. I mean, you take away almost a hundred for the year. Uh, it's like 60. 70 yards for the uh, all of the sacks and tackles for loss and all that stuff. But uh, nonetheless, I mean, it's pretty, you know, they're doing all right. But uh, Andrew Clare, the senior, he's averaging six yards per carry. Evan Hall's near there. Anthony Tice, the freshman, 
is at uh, five yards of carry. Uh, they do bring in Anthony Marti, or they have brought him in, the senior uh, quarterback that I mentioned earlier. Uh, seven carries for 44 yards. He can run it if he's in. I'm not sure if that's a specialty situation or not because I have not watched. But uh, the I've, I've, only Northwestern game I watched was the Michigan State opener. I, I saw enough. That's all I needed to see. Um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you're looking at 562 from Evan Hall, 234 from Andrew Clare, Anthony Tice with uh, 201. But Evan is your main guy. He gets got four touchdowns. All the other guys have one. So that's it for that. Now, defensively, and I didn't end up looking up, and I didn't have time. I knew this was already going to go its length. Uh, the, the people you're going to have to look out for, I mean, they're sacking the quarterback. They've, they've got 14 sacks on the year. Uh, Jeremy Miser has got four sacks. Uh, I'm not going to even – this will be fun to hear Carl Grappentine do this. Adet, Adetomiwa Adebaware. I think I maybe nailed that. 3.5 yards. Uh, sorry, 3.5 sacks. Jeffrey Pooler uh, has got uh, two and a half sacks. And Sam Dup Miller has one and a half. Those are all defensive linemen, by the way. So the, your linebackers are behind them. They've got it. So you, you really, they're not. They're they're getting what they're getting up front. That's the big thing. So um, Adetamiwa Adebaware uh, is actually also got seven tackles for loss. Keep in mind, three and a half of those are sacks. Miser, uh, he's got the four four and a half sacks or four sacks, whatever. He's got six. Tackles for loss, so add a little bit to that. Jeffrey Pooler's got three tackles for loss. They've got 32 tackles for loss. So they are good at at at, at being able to get into the backfield somewhat there. Um, so that is to be known. Interception-wise, if there's not one guy, Brandon Joseph, the safety's got one. Chris Bergen, uh, the linebacker, has one. And, and your uh, corner, Bryce Jackson, has one. So that's pretty much it. You know, that's not anything. It's it just, that is just what it is. <laughs> um, I guess one more category that I always look at. Uh, well, two. The, again, Adetamiwa Adebaware uh, has got nine quarterback hurries out of the 17. Everyone else that has one has one, but he's got nine. He's got two fumbles forced. So that's the big, like, red X Get, keep him from doing all the things that he's doing. Uh, aside, and he's got two two passes broken up as well. AJ Hampton, the junior defensive back, is your main guy that you got to pay attention to. There, he's got eight passes broken up uh, out of the nineteen that the, that they have. But other teams have got twenty four against them, and uh, other teams have also so out of the seven forces, they have seven forced fumbles on the year. By the way. Uh, but they have also had seven forced fumbles placed on them as well. Now, that just makes me curious a little bit. See, you're, you're just kind of going through the process of what I go through. So Michigan, by contrast, what, what did they have? They had, where was it? 19 passes broken up and 17 quarterback hurries, seven forced fumbles. That's, that's what we were saying here. Michigan's got 25 passes broken up, 18 quarterback hurries, and six forced fumbles. Only one forced fumble on Michigan, of course, and that was not really a forced fumble. Just, you know, it was the the JJ play. But anyway, uh, as far as quarterback hurries, I feel like this isn't accurate. It says Aiden has three, Ajabo has two. I mean, you know Ajabo has more than that. So, anyhow, that's that's what the that's what they say. That's what they're talking about. They've got the same amount of sacks as Michigan. Tackles for loss, they've got one more. So they're doing some some things right defensively, but they certainly aren't doing some things wrong as well. All right, that's gonna do it for us today. I think the cameras, yeah, we're about to die anyway. So thank you for watching and or listening. We'll be back with the mailbag tomorrow. Get your questions in, especially since I was so late. Uh, anyhow, that'll do it for us today. We'll talk to you then. Peace.